What's going on, we gamers? Here we are back with a little bit more Anvil Vault Breakers. And today I'm going to be going over the stats and what they mean for your characters. So if you're a little bit confused as of what helps you boost your damage or what helps you to not fall over, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon, I'll bring you all the latest and greatest content, hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun gameplay and reviews of upcoming games. But for today I'm here to tell you what exactly is going on with your character in Anvil Vault Breakers. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that you don't exactly 100% get told in game, and it can be a little bit confusing. So if we press our back button right here, it's going to give you a stat sheet. This, I would honestly say, tells you how good your character is more than anything else in the game. As far as I could see, there's no tutorial explaining everything, so you've kind of just got to figure things out as you go and work it off with your damage and such. So as you can see, you've got an abundance of stats such as attack power, speed, crit hit chance, damage, weapon power, all the way over to your defensive stuff such as movement speed, reduced status effect duration, survival skill cooldown decrease, but if you don't know what to look for and if you don't know how these affect your actual build it can be that you're picking up relics and not making the strongest character you actually could achieve if you knew exactly how it was factoring into your build. Right so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you the weapon damage and for this we're just going to take all of the relics off of this character meaning that he's pretty much as he is bog standard. We're going to jump into a match I've taken off the pet as well just so there's no added features and then we'll skip the upgrade to the skill so there's absolutely nothing on him. So if we have a little look right here his weapon power at the moment is 105% and that's pretty much my fault because I've just remembered that I haven't actually reset my skill tree but I'm getting an extra 5% from that. But as you can see the homing rifle on the right hand side there the weapon I've got on gives me a weapon power of 100% and nothing else. No added status, no damage, no anything it's just a bog standard plain one you start with. So I've got just over 100% weapon damage. If we go into the battle now and I give him a couple of taps. So as you can see the normal number coming up most times is 205. Obviously you're going to get crits and such but 205 was pretty much the normal bog standard plain Jane lowest you're going to get number. If we have a little look for those crits pretty much 525 seems to be the the average crit damage. But yeah 205 is the main one you want to remember and we're just going to pop outside. Right so we've jumped over to our relics and what we're going to do is increase weapon power by 100%. So if we click this and then go straight back to the exact same boss and now as you can see we're doing 400s. So pretty much a 100% increase. Obviously we have got the little extra bit from my skill tree but as you can see 400s is pretty much perfect low number and then we've got some bigger crits. But all you need to know is weapon damage basically is going to affect everything you're doing with your weapon that you have on. So for example if I went in and used a skill it's not going to be affected by my weapon damage whatsoever. Other things will factor into that but weapon damage will just be when you're using your, well on Xbox at the very least when you're using an analog stick and you're hitting them with whatever weapon you've got equipped. So pretty much on the complete flip side to weapon power is skill power and lightning was absolutely awful for showing this because everything he does is pretty much damage over time or doing lots of hits so I'm going to show it with this fellow instead. So if I do that, as you can see there was around about 4,500 and I'll just do a couple more, 3,320, 4,500 give or take and this is without anything on him whatsoever. So if I now go straight back and chuck a relic on, so here we have the extra and power chip increase skill power by 100%. We're going to equip that and jump straight back in again. As you can see, if I hit him, I'm doing almost double what I was previously. So if you're going that skill power route, you will want to boost your skill power significantly because you're going to be doing a lot of skills and that's where your damage source is going to come from. 
Now slightly different to that, but one you'll definitely want to know, is your attack power. Your attack power jumps on top of everything. So this is one of the strongest damage sources. For example, if you're shooting stuff, if you're using your skills, whatever it is, it's going to be boosted by that attack power. And that can go up to, I believe it's a thousand. So say for example, I chucked on a little bit of extra attack power by 20%. And then I chucked on this right here, the extra skill power by 100%. And then maybe even a little bit of extra weapon power. This is going to boost both of those. It's going to add on top. I mean, you can do some crazy, crazy hits. The thing to remember in this game, there's a lot of factors on your skill upgrades. The fact that you're going to be doing extra damage. The fact that you're going to be getting boost your skill power or weapon damage or certain element types. They all factor into that damage. And some things are really worth having. Having. For example, the bog standard ones such as this, shocked target, 50% damage increase against shocked targets. It might not sound like much, but as you're working your way down and picking up more of these relics, I believe the max once you hit tier 5 of these, you picked them all up, is 250%. It's one of the biggest sources of damage in the game, and it can really mean once you factor it in with all of these such things, you're going to do some crazy, crazy numbers, especially if you manage to rock a little bit like over here, such as your crit chip with critical hit chance 15%, or a little bit of this right here, a little bit of critical damage. All of it's going to factor in to make a really strong build. So if we go back to the stats, as you can see, the attack power is 300. I believe at max level, I think it was 1000. The attack speed is 100%. If you're boosting your attack speed, it's going to mean you're getting more pretty much damage from your weapons because you're going to be able to shoot them faster, hit things faster. You're going to be using your weapon more often. So the more weapon damage you've got will factor into that and will mean you get a big increase to your DPS. Your crit hit chance, again, if you're going for that crit damage boost, the crit hit chance is essential. Crit hit chance tends to supersede crit damage because you want to be able to crit as much as possible. Crit damage, again, whatever you can chuck into this is going to mean you get those big chunky yellow numbers, the crit damage whenever they manage to proc. And on some builds, say for example the Mountain that does really slow but big hits, you can see yourself netting well over a couple of million damage when you've got a lot of relics and you're managing to pull off some of your skill moves when everything factors together. Weapon power, like I said, that's going to mean how hard you're hitting with your actual weapon. For example, over here, my homing rifle is going to do a certain amount of damage. If I boost it all the way up to, say, 500, it's going to do roughly five times the damage, give or take, factoring other things. Skill power, like I said, if you're going for a big build revolving around your damage from your skills, you're going to want to chuck quite a bit into this because it's going to make everything much, much more damaging. And you can have a lot of fun when you see those big crits, like I said earlier, from the mountain and such just underneath that and we've got reduce skill cooldown for example if i bop out of this if i press that right there i've got a 12 second cooldown if i manage to get 50 percent off of that it'll be down to six seconds duration most times you don't have to worry too much about your reduced skill cooldown because there are a few things in the game that can really help that out some of your upgrade skills some of the actual relics in game take seconds off but if you can get a little bit, it can definitely help you to perform more skills. Next up, and we've got Ignore Enemy Defense. If you can manage to chuck anything into this, I would show you the Relic, but for some reason it hasn't unlocked on my one yet. Anytime you're doing damage, you're going to be doing a little bit more incremental damage because they've got slightly less defenses. So if you can pick something up, that can really help out. Or there's some Vault Breakers out there that do this as standard on some of their skill upgrades. Probably the most notable one is Shuri with her Ice Effect. She can knock them down 100% straight away and it can mean that everyone's doing a little bit more damage about themselves without even needing to worry. This can definitely help to get your damage up, even though with myself I tend to put more into the others such as attack power and actual crit damage and such more than this. And lastly for the attack we've got damage increase against bosses. Anytime you've got extra damage to your bosses it just means they're going to take additional damage from you from whatever sources you have coming their way. So it'll pretty much factor into your crits, your weapon damage, your skill damage, everything will be affected by this and you'll be getting a lot of extra damage if you can boost it significantly. Jumping over to defense, max HP, nice and easy, you're going to get relics that give you 30,000, 10,000, 30%. 
Whatever you can do to chuck a little bit of health on can really help those builds out, especially your tanky builds. But one thing to remember, no amount of defense is going to stop those one-shot mechanics, or when they're enraged, it just means you're gonna get in a bit of trouble with them. And like I said, no amount of defense or health is going to stop you from falling over if you're getting hit by those really big damage effects from the bosses. Defense, again, a really, really good one for those classes that aren't surviving on dodges alone, Every time you manage to push this up, it's going to mean you're taking a little bit less damage, so it can really help out those Vault Breakers, especially the ones that are closer range, say for example melee types. Close range damage reduction, again if you want to chuck anything into this, it can help you a little bit. I tend to completely stay away from these, I put in a little bit of health, a little bit of defense, and they seem to keep me golden, except for those really really tough bosses. that. Exactly the same for long range damage, if you're playing a little bit further back and you're worried about getting hit, you might want to put something into this, but I find max health and defense supersedes it. Movement speed is just going to affect this right here, pretty much how much you're running around the map. If you're finding yourself really, really slow, you might want to chuck something into this, but a lot of the Vault Breakers seem to be pretty good as standard. And of course, you've always got your dash moves and such. Next, you've got reduced status effect duration. That one's pretty much exactly like it sounds. If you've got, say for example, a classic example be poison effect going on, this is gonna mean it's gonna not last anywhere near as long as it usually would have, but you don't really have to worry about these too much. You're probably gonna go more into your damage type or a little bit more defense. Survival skill cooldown decrease can actually be quite good. That's gonna affect whatever your survival skill is. So if you're on a tank, it's gonna be your guard. If you're on a type like this, it's gonna be your dash. And obviously once you're out of it, it's going to recharge a little bit faster if you chuck some stats over into this. And finally for defense, we've got increased the amount of recovery. So for example, if you've got a way to get your health back, this right there is going to mean you get a little bit more health back, either through regen or through using a skill or something like that. It's going to mean you're able to boost your health a little bit extra, and this one can be nice on some of the tankier classes or some classes that struggle with their health regen. Just over to the status effects, and like I said, this one's pretty much down to your class or what character you're playing. So for example, Lightning is gonna mainly be focusing on his Lightning damage. These can absolutely change the game for you. If you're factoring these in with all of the other buffs, with the skill upgrades, at max level, like I said earlier, you can get 250%, I believe it is. When you're doing your damage on them, after you've hit them with whatever skill's going to apply that, it's going to give you some really big numbers. So these right here can mean the difference between absolutely nuking a boss or struggling with them quite a bit. Right, so if you're playing as a tank, you're gonna have what's called a perfect guard. So for example, oh, he throws me. Okay, right, any second that. 6,715 was the crit, if you saw that number. Now he's got nothing on him if I bop out again. I've now chucked on 100% weapon damage. I need to get a crit. As you can see, 6,715. It's not done a thing. So weapon power doesn't actually increase your counter attack. Now with 100% skill power, as hopefully you'll see in a second. Oh, fella. Ah. 12,820. So as you can see, it was much, much higher because we've got that um, because we've got that 100% skill power when I speak properly. Another thing to remember, like I said previously, attack power is going to factor on top of that as well. So if you've got really, really high attack power and you've got really high skill power, you're going to do some really big counters with your actual breaker. So if I jump over to this fella and chuck four relics on him. I can show you just how much extra damage you'll be doing. Remember, the only ones you can have are any four relics, but only one of them can be your legendary. So, as you can see, I can't pick that or that because I've already got a legendary one equipped. So, I'm going to chuck on this, then this, and chuck on a little bit of crit. As you can see, I've got crit, I've got extra damage going to the single target. When they're shocked, I get 50% extra damage to them, and I've got a 100% extra on my skill upgrade. Skill upgrades can be purchased from just over on the right here, and as you can see, 
So for example, this one right here is gonna give me five seconds increase to my laser turret duration. If it was doing double lasers, I'd get a lot more damage from it. This right here is gonna give me an extra bit of HP every time I land a successful shockwave. These are probably one of your best sources of damage or survivability or whatever you're going for. And although they will change and you're gonna to have to have a little bit of luck to get the perfect ones you're after, they can mean the difference between doing an absolute abundance of damage or not having the best run depending on what comes up. Also, one thing to look out for, which, hey, it did come up, the gold guns. The gold guns in this game will be giving you the biggest increase to your actual damage because they're gonna cost you 300, and they can have, I believe, up to four effects going on over on the right-hand side. Sometimes you might be lucky enough to get two or three tier three ones, and they can really mean the difference between an absolutely amazing build or one that's not that good and a little bit lackluster, say, for example. But don't think just because they're gold, they're the best you can get. You do have to look on the right and see what they give you. For example, this one gives you a little bit of extra movement, 20% extra attack power and increase 5% of HP when a critical hit lands on the target. So honestly, that one's not very good as a gold gun. I wouldn't pick it up. Some of the purple ones may in fact be a bit better. For example, this one right here, after, requir after requiring a relic, 50% increase to skill power until 100 kills. I would probably pick that one up over that one. And this one is even better than that. Increase attack power by 25% when HP is 80% or higher. An additional dash and teleport use or 30% max guard duration. That right there is actually really good on every character you can get. It makes you much more survivable, much tankier if you're a tank. You're able to survive the encounters a lot better the more dashes and such or guard you've got in your build. But all in all, that one's probably slightly better than this gold gun just over there. So just because it's gold doesn't mean it's better. It just has the chance to be a lot better. Also, as you can see, just up the top, it's going to give you weapon power 150. Bog standard, you've got 100. Purples give you 130. And the gold ones at max give you 150. Meaning they will do the most damage when you factor in that, plus all of the other stuff going on with your build. Right, so we've managed to pick up that one as well, which is going to give us a little bit extra damage. But as you can see, because we've got four artifacts on there, we're going to do a significant upgrade. He says getting hit because he's not paying attention. But yeah, as you can see, the damage coming out is much, much more than it was previously, just because our build's so much stronger because of the relics we've got on there. It makes certain bosses really, really easy. And in general, if you can't nuke the bosses down, you can be in a bit of trouble. I'll show you afterwards, because you do get raged, enraged timers. Rage timers? Enraged timers. If you have a little look, this fella's not got his on because he's the first boss, but just underneath his health bar, you'll have an enrage meter. If they manage to completely fill that up because you're taking too long to actually nuke them down, they will turn turbo mode and absolutely decimate your team. In some cases you can survive, but I would highly recommend not trying it because it's much, much harder. They're gonna hit harder, they may well be doing one shots a lot more often, and just in general, it's gonna be much tougher for you to survive and you're gonna have a lot more casualties. One thing to also remember, as I've just realized on, is on this weapon, immunities. Immunity against poison effects. These right here, you can get a gold one that gives you immune for everything, or you can get certain ones, say for example like here, poison, fire, lightning, ice, whatever you're going for, you're going to be immune to that type of damage. It doesn't mean that if someone's shooting a fireball in your face, you're not going to take any damage. It's pretty much the damage over time effects that are going on, especially for example those poison. But again, with the bosses, it's not going to stop any of the one-shot mechanics that go on. So if he does a big nuke, say for example an ice beam or something along that effect, you're probably probably still going to fall over, don't think you're completely immune to that. It's just in general the smaller damage types or the damage over time effects. For example, this boss right here, you might see him launch a few fireballs at me. They've got an aura around them that's going to make sure that you burn or set on fire. You don't take anything from that. So for example, if we have a look here, I have been set on fire, so I'm taking tick damage of that. If I had immunity to fire, I would not be taking any damage. If I had something on that cut down how long I've got it, then obviously I'll be taking it for less duration. 
while you guys and girls hopefully that's helped you out a little bit as always for all things gaming for all things xbox take care i'll see you on the next day